Okay, so today I'm working on a 2004 EasyGo TXT PDS 36 volt uh, golf cart. A little background on this golf cart. I picked it up at an auction and the previous owner uh, prior to even buying it told me that they'd put new batteries in it. Uh, but once they hooked it all up, they apparently hooked something up wrong and they smoked the programmable controller that's in it with this being a lifted golf cart you have to have uh, aftermarket uh, controller uh, to uh, compensate for torque and the tire size and all that so um, I just wanted to make sure so I went ahead and hooked everything up correctly uh, this here is the controller for the motor and when I got it hooked up it started smoking out of it so uh, obviously it, it is fried so uh, with that being said though it kind of made me curious i was like well i wonder if everything's all right with the motor and i wanted to be able to test that as well and that's kind of why i'm making the video here uh, i found a replacement for this uh controller and we'll kind of get into that real quick um uh, kind of give you an idea the motor that's on this is a dnd &D motor systems motor model number es 9b50 the controller that's currently on it is an Alltrax model DCX 500R12. It's a 500 amp controller. And they no longer make that model controller. So uh, I contacted and, and through research on the, the internet there, I found uh, a replacement, I guess, for that. They, they make a, an Alltrax uh, controller now, a newer model. And that's what I'm gonna have to go with. So uh, the reason I made this though, this video is I want to be able to test my motor out prior to ordering my controller and and all that. So uh, what I have here is a shunt wound motor and series wound motor. Apparently there are different types of motors that they put in these electric motors. Uh, some being of which is a series wound motor and some are a, sh a shunt wound motor. So I wasn't real sure what I had uh, to begin with. And the first you know, thing that I found on the internet was talking about how to test series wound motors. And, and I later found a thing talking about how to test the shunt wound motors. I, I couldn't find anything on YouTube or videos and that's why I'm making this, vi this video now. So uh, I'll just kind of show you a little diagram here of what I've got. The, uh, this is your, say this is your motor here with your shaft coming out you've got four posts on your motor and you have an a1 post the f1 post an a2 post and the f2 post okay so the way you test a series wound motor okay is you want to run a jumper wire from a1 to f1 okay and what i mean by a jumper wire is you could simply pull one off of your battery here and just use this okay so you're gonna run a cable from a1 to f1 and then you're gonna take and get you a 12 volt battery you don't want to hook it up to anything greater uh, than a 12 volt battery you're gonna get some jumper cables and run jumper cables and you can put positive here and negative here or negative here or positive here it doesn't matter because the polarity in these okay and then you're just gonna run it to your battery and at that point in time, your motor should turn. Okay, with this being a shunt wound motor though, uh, it is a little different. The way it works is just the same as, as you run a jumper wire from A1 to F1, you're gonna run a jumper wire from A2 to F2. Okay, and at that point, you're gonna run, you know, a jumper cable from this wire over to your battery and you're going to run your jump, other jumper cable positive or negative over to your battery okay so it don't matter which one you have positive or negative because of polarity okay so i'll, I'll kind of show you here what i did and uh, i'll hook it up and, and let you take a look and, and see how that works so uh see if i can get the camera down in here so you'll see there that i have uh, if I can get in here, let me back up just a little bit. Okay, so if you notice there, I've got 
A2 and F2 connected with the jumper. And then I've got my A1 and F1 connected with a jumper. And then I just connected, you know, positive to one side and negative to another. So it's pretty much putting positive to one side of it and negative to the other side, to the other two posts. Okay. And then just come down here. And I've got me a 12 volt uh, car battery. Uh, just make sure it's got good charge on it. Like I said, don't want to hook it to anything greater than 12 volts. I'm going to stick one cable on. And stick another one on. And it is going to arc a little, but no biggie. Okay, and you'll notice the wheel starts turning. Okay. So, uh, kind of show you that you can hook this up either way. We'll just switch it real quick. Because it don't really matter. And it goes back to turning again. So, this here is a shunt wound motor and like i said when when i first started uh fooling around with this i wasn't even sure which one i actually had uh and i actually tested this motor as if it was a series wound motor and it just didn't do anything so uh and then i found how to tech test the uh, shunt wound motor and it worked so uh just to kind of give you a heads up on how to test a motor if uh if you're unsure if your motor is good or bad, uh, this is the the best that I've found on the, the internet is to how to test one of these motors. And, and you wanna definitely unhook uh, all of your controller wires and your battery and everything like that and have your jack, uh, jack under your golf cart and have it jacked up in the air. So when you, when you put it on there, your golf cart ain't trying to take off on you. But uh, I hope this video helped. And uh, maybe once I get the, uh, the new Alltrax controller in and uh, start putting it in, I can make me another video here and, and show you how that turned out.